Please don't say nothing stupid. Please don't say nothing stupid. Come on, Brendan. Oh, soda dropped. Hellboy 2 dropped. So it was a really good year, 2007. Oh, yeah. He was on, he's, a, he's on Hellboy 2. I forgot about that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, one of the greatest shows of all time. It was a great and show. I, I think what's interesting too, Ron, is I'm glad you came in here because sometimes, like, you're a badass on there. You know, mm. like, you're such a badass. That was just acting. Yeah. Just acting. No. But then so sometimes we'll get guys in here where I'll, I'll be fans of them, then, you know, from TV or movies. And then you come in, you're like, oh, it's, you're nothing like those guys. Yeah. Man. Mm. Well, you, yeah, you, that, that's right. They you got, have eyeliner on, dude. You seem yeah. to know that you did tap into something because that guy, as, as that show goes on, your character is so bad, I can't believe it. Mm. Like, just willing to do anything. And that is probably how those, you know, the leaders of criminal organizations really are. What, what did, what, and then when they were creating that, was there any sort of conversation or, or connection to the actual biker gangs? Oh, my God. I mean, the, 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 the best thing that Kurt Sutter did when he was, before he even started writing the series, was he went up to uh, Northern Cali and hung out with the Hells Angels mm. and immersed himself Brilliant. in in their world because he you know every time we had ever seen a, a depiction of uh biker clubs they were always one-dimensional they were always fat guys with beards you know spitting and you know filling up women you yep. know, and pissing in you know public and you know like and kurt won filling up women yo that's a that sounds crazy isn't it <laughs> filling up women <laughs> Big up Ron, man. I'm going to use that one. Hey, you want to get filled up? <laughs> you want to get filled up, eh? Man will fill you up like an eclair. <laughs> man will fill you up like a like a cannoli. Is that a cannoli? All right? Fill you up like a cannoli. <laughs> fill her up. <laughs> I wanted to create a family drama. You know that happened to take place in this world but he really wanted to create uh, 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 the hierarchy of you know who's who in the club you know wh what does it mean to be the president what does it mean to be the sergeant in arms all this stuff um, and what does it mean with regard to your enemies you know the other clubs around where there's all these turf wars so he went up there and he spent like, you know, at least a month or two just immersing himself in the world. And when he came back, that's when he started writing. So I think the thing that one of the things that people responded to was the authenticity, mm. was the fact that this wasn't a one dimensional kind of world. This mm. was a bunch of very nuanced kind of like really weirdly connected relationships, you know, uh, who the queen was who the old lady was, you know, like what it meant to raise a family, what it meant when you put on the, 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 the cut, you know, um, what your responsibilities were. Because this was a very, very well-crafted subculture of guys. Most of the b bikers in, in, in the United States, especially in the 50s, were either fought in the World War II, World War II or, or, yeah. or, or, or the Vietnam. Korean War. Yeah. And they came back to an ungrateful nation and they said, we, we were heroes, man. We fucking put our lives on the line for you. And, and, you know, you're treating us like we're, you know, like, like we're, like, you know, we're homeless. Like we're, you know, so fuck you. We're going to create our own little homeless cats, little subculture. And yep. we're going to have our own little, you know, um, uh, rules of the road. And we're going to live off the grid. Uh. And that's how the Hells Angels and a lot of these original clubs started. Yeah, I love They're all very patriotic guys who who realized uh, that they were coming back to uh, not not the most grateful of Come situations. On, Brendan, yeah, I was I was doing a spot at the Laugh Act, and I see I, I read all the. <laughs> I knew it. I haven't even seen this clip yet, but I had a feeling. I had a feeling that Brendan would try to insert himself into this conversation. Ron Perman's talking so eloquently and so well about the fucking genius of fucking what's the, what's the writer of, of Sons of Anarchy, Kurt Sutter, right? The genius of Kurt Sutter and the fact that he immersed himself in biker gangs and really got to understand them properly, and he wanted to tell a very honest portrayal of how they are as people and how it's not black and white and they're layered and they've got the same issues that regular people have in terms of relationships and family and. Belonging and blah blah blah, and he's making you remember. 
that feeling when you first watched Sons of Anarchy, the first time you saw those guys and the cuts and the thing and the acting and the conflict and the love, right? You, it makes you wonder. It makes you fucking reminisce of how amazing that was, right? You're thinking about it. Then here comes Brendan. Oh yeah, I remember when the Hell's Angels. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna insert himself in it he's gonna say something about the hell's angels being a good friend of his <laughs> or about being mistaken for a hell's angel it's coming just you watch it's fucking coming he's definitely coming and it's definitely coming watch let's see books on biker gangs i know my biker gangs and i see this group of biker <laughs> gangs in the back i'm about to laugh press x for doubt Brendan hasn't read a single book in his life. I don't even think Brendan's read. What's that comedy book called? Um, oh, what's it called again? It's got a microphone on it. It's something. Uh, you're standing. What's it called? I think I, I think I have it on my in my fucking Amazon. I bet you Brendan hasn't even read the seminal comedy book. Where is it? It's called something. Um, is it comedy? Let's see if I can find it. Comedy. Oh, what's it called again? something you're standing on a mic what's it called uh microphone standing i forgot what the name is it's a cover it's got a microphone on it and it's like um anyway it doesn't matter i bet you brendan hasn't read even a book on stand-up comedy i bet he hasn't even read one i bet you he's not read a single book on stand-up comedy so i don't believe he's read a book on fucking biker gangs Unless it's a, a picture book, one of those big coffee table photography books where a sick photographer will go and hang out with a, with, a, with a biker gang and take all these cool pictures with a wide lens and shit. No other way he did it. Factory. Grab bikers, yeah. But like, yeah, a good amount of them. I see them in their patches. <laughs> I won't say what gang it is, but I recognize the logo. <laughs> I won't say what gang it is. I won't say what gang it is, right? I won't say what gang it is. <laughs> I have to keep it secret. <laughs> I saw them outside. I can't say what gang it is because they told me not to say. Okay, okay, brother. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit, man, bike gangs. So I get off stage. I'm waiting for my car outside. They come out. They follow me out. And I'm like, oh, when I was a UFC fighter, I was supposed to do this appearance in um, Colorado Springs. And my manager calls me and goes, you can't go. I'm like, what do you mean I can't go? It was a paid gig and I have a lot of money back then. I'm like, what do you mean I can't go? He goes, there, there's, a, there's a biker gang meeting, a Hells Angel meeting, and one of their enforcers put a bounty on you. He, wants, he says he can beat you up. Oh, my like, what? God. What? He can fight you. Yeah, you, oh he wants to fight me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is this lie what is this fucking lie a biker gang member put a hit out on brendan because he what he didn't turn up to a gig hold on let's rewind that a bit because i didn't understand what he meant there why is he get hit put on him hold on let's do it one more time one more time springs and my manager oh, calls sorry, 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 sorry. they come out they follow me out and i'm like oh when i was a ufc fighter i was supposed to do this appearance in um Colorado Springs and my manager calls me and goes you can't go I'm like what do you mean I can't go it was a paid gig and I have a lot of money back then I'm like what do you mean I can't go he goes there there's a there's a biker gang meeting a hell's angel meeting and one of their enforcers put a bounty on you he wants he says he can beat you up I'm like what he can fight you yeah you he wants, he wants to fight me so a random biker gang randomly put a hit on his head for nothing just because he went to fight him because I thought he first said that he cancelled a gig and that's why the biker gang guy went to fight him, which would, again, it's still a lie, but that's more of a like rationale, right? Imagine it was a, it, it was a, a performance at like a biker gang owned club, but he didn't know. And then he cancelled it, like he cancels all his gigs last minute because it's not worth it to go there because it's making money. And then maybe one person that owns the fucking club felt pissed off, felt personally offended and went to fight him. That I can believe, slightly. But a random biker gang guy just wants to fight Brendan because what, he wants to test himself against a former UFC fighter. <laughs> <sighs> this guy can lie.
this man is Olympic levels of lying. I can't believe this. All because he asked Ron Perlman about Sons of Anarchy. This guy is the fucking talent. He's the guest. He should be getting asked all the questions. I'd be asking him tons of questions about Sons of Anarchy. I'd probably make him get tired and get annoyed and keep asking him the same thing. Why is he talking to us about his fucking story? Why is he, make, why is he feeling inadequate around the guest? who actually lived that life because he was in that fucking TV series. <sighs> okay, let's see what happens in this story. Does he beat up the guy? Do the Hells Angels all clap for him? Do they give him a free bike? I want to know how he's going to lie at this one. Did they give him a vest that he can't wear outside? How does he end this lie? On you, he, wants, he says he can beat you up. Like what? He can fight you. Yeah, you he wants, he wants to fight me. I'm like, I don't want to be part of that. He's like, it's the the sheriff called and said he can't go. It's not worth the risk. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I thought maybe there's when I walk out on the street of sunset of I'm like, oh, hopefully they're not trying to fight me. And they're all out there and they're fans. And my first <sighs> So one one biker gang member wants to fight you randomly which now turns into the whole mc knowing who you are and being fans of you so they walked he walked out and they all cheered hey. they all started fucking shooting their guns in the air beeping their horns stomping their feet punching their fucking chest slapping their wives as he walked out in celebration brendan's here hell yeah ride hard brendan's here <laughs> this nigga is a fucking liar oh my god man brendan johnson matthew deshane shaw you should be ashamed of yourself why are you lying why first question i said i go hey man uh, i'm not even trying to overstep here i go but i'm a, i was a, i love sons of anarchy i was like how how realistic was that he's like pretty <laughs> He walked up to a random biker gang and said, <laughs> Hey, Hell's Angels, real quick, real quick. Um, do you have cable? <laughs> <laughs> do you have um showtime or whatever the network do you do you have hbo do you have tnt um do you have discovery <laughs> do you have disney plus okay cool do you know netflix all right cool so this show <laughs> before you go and ride hard right and go and beat some guys up or shoot your guns what do you just, just want to get your opinion on something just, just want to just, just, just want to just want to ask you some questions about sons of anarchy <laughs> Spot on, man. One of the guys goes, pretty spot on, man. Did you ever get approached by any of the Hells Angels, any of those guys? Well, while the show was on. <laughs> you see Ron Perman do his eyebrows. Did he raise his eyebrows? Pretty spot on, man. Pretty, that's what he said, right? Did you ever get approached by any of the Hells Angels, any of those guys? Well, while the show was on. Did he raise his eyebrows? Did you ever get Hold on. Did he raise his eyebrows? What's that? Or, or my, He's like, watching. pretty spot on, man. One of the guys goes, pretty spot on, man. You yeah, he, he kind of, oh. He kind of pulled his head back a little bit. Hold on. How, how realistic was that? He's like, pretty spot on, man. One of the guys goes, pretty spot on, man. Did you ever <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> this is what older guys do. Older guys, like your dad or somebody that's just wise, been around the block. When you're when you're lying, they just they just they're just quiet. When you're lying, they just look at you. Okay. Oh, okay. And they clapped. Oh. And they gave you a vest. Huh? And a free bike. Oh, wow. Is it fast? Or you, or you haven't read it yet because, what? There's no gas? Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
there were fans. There are always fans in his story. Everybody he interacts with are always fans. Oh, I fucking love Brendan Shaw, man. You are amazing. You always put me in a good mood. Thank you get you, approached by any of the Hells Angels, any of these guys? Well, while the show was on, you know, we only we only work like four months out of the year to do the show. So we had like seven months to ourselves and, you know, wherever we went around the around the Canada, everywhere. Do you went. think Ron knows has full of it? 100%. He's doing that older guy thing. Older guys do that. Every older guy I've spoken to, like they've got that thing where they just know they can suss out bullshit, but they don't, they don't, they don't want to bother arguing with you. So they're just going to sit back and let you talk. For sure he knows. For sure he knows. Thank you, Valdez fan. But for sure he knows. He's just sitting there looking at him. And he wasn't even making sounds, just non-verbal, just looking at him. <laughs> Oh, who says something about Mexico? Who says, so someone, someone says something about Mexico here. Oh, Fashion Roadman, no. Fashion Roadman says, at this rate, going to Colombia to ask the cartel if the Cap <laughs> El Capo is accurate. El Chapo, so you know what's funny about this, right? I just thought just now, I was thinking to myself, I don't know if you guys have seen in the news that that um, reggaeton type artist called Peso Plumo has gotten a bit of trouble, right? Because of some whatever cartel business shit right and he's basically got um death threats legit one so he's not allowed to perform in or he's not performing in mexico anymore i bet you i bet you if brendan sees that story and he comments on the fire and a kid he's gonna say his girl who's from guadalajara his wife somehow is involved or has got information from people back there about Peso Plumo and what he's involved in. I bet you, just watch. If they talk about that topic on The Fire and the Kid, he's going to say something like, I don't know, like, <laughs> Peso Plumo's people text his wife and they, like, I took, honestly, watch. I'm making a prediction now. If they do it, I want the credit. I bet you they're gonna. he's going to try and talk like he knows what's happening to Peso Plumo on the ground level. He's there in fucking, how do you abbreviate uh, Mexico City? Is it MX, is it MDX, MXC? How they say it? What's a cool way to say Mexico City? Is it MDX, MXC, MEX, whatever it's fucking called. I bet you he's going to start talking like that. Watch, watch, just you watch. Just you fucking watch. <laughs> he's going to get himself involved. <sighs> and if, if, if the biker gang biker clubs heard that we were around they were always invite us to sit down and and they wanted to show us their appreciation that's pretty cool so we really got like the endorsement of the real deal guys which well you played it like you see again human like that you played it that that's you just you do this subtle thing and I, I don't know how you approach that role but i would say this a lot of times i see people playing bad guys and i just go like this i look at the actor and i go you don't think like a bad guy and you never have and in fact and you don't know any bad guys so you're playing you're playing someone you saw in a film somewhere that wasn't the case with you you were playing what what i would say probably you know it's it was almost like your character was a guy who was trying to get from point a to point b if he had to take some shortcuts he was going to take some short so what would you rather what would you rather what would you rather in the chat what would you rather would you rather listen to Brendan Shaw pretend like he's been in a biker gang or that he knows biker gang guys or that he's familiar with MCs or he's read MC history books or he knows what organized crime is? Or would you prefer to speak to Br Brian and have him talk to you like actor to actor, like you're in some fucking acting school and you're talking about the arts and the craft of it and how to method act like what do you prefer what would you prefer in the t in terms of bullshit how much could you take what would you be able to take i would take brendan honestly exactly i'll say the same thing. i'm not going to take brian pontificating about actor studio shit when he did a fucking one second um guest role in the background of fucking um what you call it dark knight or whatever that movie with no, a joker sorry I'm not listening to you, bro. You're on the Goldbergs. You know what I mean? Like, let's not talk like you are in some fucking Scorsese movie or something. Like, relax your, relax your fucking briefs. I'm going for Brendan. I'm not sitting down and pontificating about the fucking craft of acting with fucking Brian Callen. <laughs> no chance. Shortcuts, but he was getting to point B. And you rooted for him. Is that how you looked at that? How did you play? How do you play a bad guy? 
How, what are you thinking? First of all, are you even thinking he's a bad guy? Well, you kind of know yeah. what position he, he, he occupies in, in the terms of the overall story. Right. I've, got, I've got to show you guys and something. He's, I've got to show you, know, you guys you something. You can't help but say, yeah, okay, I'm playing the villain. Yeah. You know? I've got to show you guys but, something. But I've got you have to show to, you guys that's, something. That's where the judgment completely has to, has to come get thrown out one second you one can't second, as an actor second, ever judge second, the person that you're about to play you simply have to understand him and the thing that i like to do <laughs> with uh characters that have a kind of a muddy relationship with with uh fitting into society that's how i would describe uh some of the villains i've played you know by the way is it just an LA thing or is it an ego thing? Like, if I meet somebody interesting, like, say you're in a bar or you're at an airport or you're just out about somewhere and you just bump into somebody interesting, you just strike up a conversation with somebody, right? And they tell you, I don't know, like, it's one time I was on, a, I was on, I think it's the one time I went, I think it was maybe the time I went to LA. I happened to be sitting on a row with a guy that worked on an oil rig, right? And he was basically flying out to this oil rig. No, so he was flying back home, but he works on the oil rig like, I don't know, six to nine months like, in, in the year. And I was basically just telling him, no, asking him questions about his job, right? And he was just like telling me everything about it. And it was really interesting. And we spent the whole plane journey or most of it just talking about him because it was fascinating because I've never heard of that kind of job. I don't know anything about it. So I was just intrigued by it. So I just asked him questions. At no point in that conversation did I feel like trying to one-up him and talk about my experience with oil <laughs> you know it didn't matter because he's the interesting guy i'm interested in what he has to do what he does for his life and his career how he balances his family life how much money he makes if it's is it really hard work all that stuff was really interesting to find out but these guys i don't i wonder if it's like an actor thing or if it's like an la thing they seem to feel inadequate like they kind of feel a little bit inadequate they feel a little bit insecure because they're in front of Ron Perlman and he's, you know, obviously a legit actor in his own right. They kind of feel insecure. So they want to kind of try and like, you know, pretend like they're, you know, like they're on the same level and try and make themselves feel good. Like, what is that? Who does that? I've never done that in my life. I swear on my life I haven't. I don't, even if I know something, I'll just like pretend I don't. So you speak about it because it's more interesting because, you know, I don't know, I'm boring talking about myself. But they feel honestly inadequate about it. It's so weird. Is I really want to know what made him like that. I want to know what happened to them that made their psychology, psychological wiring muddy and, and uh, a little bit toward the dark side. Mm -hmm. And then the minute I embrace that, there's a sympathetic kind of a quality regardless of how, what, how bad the things he does are. I think this is the thing that Scorsese does so well in his movies. You know, you watch Robert De Niro in Goodfellas or Oof. Joe Pesci in Goodfellas. You love them. Yeah. No. But they're fucking evil. I mean, yeah. they, yep. they just like, they're ruthless We had guys. Sammy the Bull Gravano on this podcast and Sammy said when he was a kid, he was dyslexic and the kids used to make fun of him. I don't see this. they called him dumb. And so he goes, I'm Look dumb. Look at that. You see that? All you I see got that? is the street. Did you see that? I've actually met an actual real life Hells Angels, or I guess they were. Maybe they just bought this in a souvenir shop, right? I just remember this when I was actually looking at my emails. I've actually met some. That's the funny thing. I've actually legitimately met some. This is like in Camden. I think it's somewhere in Camden. I don't know where it was. But look at that. I've actually met some. I actually met them a very, very long time ago, right? <laughs> but who cares who gives a fuck <laughs> you know it's not that big of a deal so maybe i've met more hell's angels than brendan maybe i've legitimately met more hell's angels than fucking brendan right <laughs> did they fill you up yeah exactly maybe i've met more hell's angels than brendan i don't know if they're legit though because you know there's like a blackish looking kind of guy here and they're not i don't know what do you guys think do you think they bought them from the store? Or do you think they're all house angels? What, what do you guys think? Do you think I got? Do you think I got scammed? <laughs> Did I get scammed? <laughs> I 
I got scammed, didn't it? Did I get scammed? <laughs> they told me they were his angels. <laughs> what do you guys think? Thrift store, they real, okay, they real. <laughs> they were fans, exactly, Jan, they were fans. <laughs> hey, AZ, we love the random show. <laughs> when they walked out, they clapped. <gasps> oh my God, they were fans, exactly. Nah, them James, them jeans say it all. They're real, exactly. Yeah, those jeans are like, fuck. I didn't even check the jeans. Yeah, that's um, that's a, that's special, isn't it? Cool. I don't know if they're real or not. I don't know. I'm not too sure. This guy's throwing me off, though. Have you ever seen a a biker wearing a fedora? That's the only thing that's throwing me off. Have you ever seen a biker wear a fedora? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have you seen one wear a fedora? And plugs? Does it look like he's got plugs in? Hmm. Okay, look at the shoes. Are the shoes giving biker gang? I don't know, man. They should be wearing boots, innit? But then, oh, he's got a neck tattoo. Okay, cool. Yeah, true. He's got a neck tattoo. True. He's got, yeah, the neck tattoo is a bit dicey. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, big up me and my and my Hell's Angels, man. My Hell's Angels crew. You get me, right? I'm I'm in the MC. Right? I'm in the MC. It started like that and he goes, the one thing I do have though is I'll fight anybody and I'll never give up. You gotta Oh, Keith me. Thompson said it they don't wear boots, they wear trainers. Okay, cool. And that's how the older guy said, This kid's like a bull. Crash, where the bikes at? The bikes are in the garage. They're getting them fixed. <laughs> They're getting the bikes fixed. They're in the garage, so <laughs> he's fighting three dudes at one time. Right. He was so angry because right. he felt he was obviously very intelligent, but felt dumb because he was told he was dumb. Right, right. He was dyslexic. Right, and that 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 Same human. Yeah, and that that sort of uh, affirmation <laughs> from these these gangsters in the town, the guys who everybody looked up to. <laughs> they took an Uber. <laughs> I think I got duped in it. I think I might have got duped. I think they might have scammed me. <laughs> oh, anyway, he went. I want. I, I want to be this guy. Yeah. And he was here for it. an hour. And like, man, he's all right. And you're like, oh, he killed seventeen people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like you said, like you, Sammy you, killed. You can't him. help. He's got a sense of humor. He's got. He's charming. You know, and and you will see a human side of his him. Yeah. But he's also a soldier. Right. And when he was working for the organization. Why are they telling him this stuff for? This podcast is so shit. I'm done anyway. Why are they talking to Ron Perlman like he doesn't know who Sammy the Bull Gravano is? <laughs> Why are they talking to him like he's a fucking idiot? <laughs> Honestly. Why are they just telling him this stuff for? Like he doesn't know. <laughs> and lecturing. It's so insulting. It's just lecturing him on this shit. Like, <laughs> okay. 